pudge. Just your, well, less than average high school kid. Alaska. Your way over the top, more than average high school girl. She was someone. She was someone everyone wanted to be. Someone everyone wanted to know, and then there's Pudge. Someone that no one knew. Someone that didn't really have any friends until he met Alaska. Alaska made him someone. Made him someone people wanted to be around. Made him someone that people could love. Pudge after Alaska. Popular, went on adventures and had friends, and then Alaska after Pudge is no longer existent in Looking for Alaska by John Green. From the desk of Takumi Hikuhito to Pudge and Clono. I'm sorry I haven't talked to you in a while. For a long time, I was mad at you. The fact that you kept me out of everything hurt me. And so I kept what I knew to myself. And then even after I wasn't mad anymore, I still didn't say anything. I don't know why. I guess Pudge had that kiss and I had this secret. You've probably figured this out for the most part, but I saw her that night. I was sitting in my room with Laura and some people, and I heard crying out the back window, so I ran outside, and there she was just walking across the soccer field. I tried to talk to her, but she was just so sad. She was looking for flowers. Her mother was dead eight years that day, and she always brought flowers to her mother's grave, but that night she forgot, and she was looking for flowers. I didn't know what to say or do, and I think she always counted on me to be the person that would always say and do the right things to help her at the right times, but I just couldn't, so I went back inside. I didn't think she was going to do anything. I thought she would just walk around and cry herself to sleep, and then I heard the ignition start. But she was drunk, just trash drunk. And I'm so sorry. I know you loved her. It was hard not to. From Takumi. After I read the note, I ran. I ran like I had never smoked a cigarette. I ran like I ran on with Takumi on bar night across the dorm circle to Takumi's room, but Takumi was gone. And I did not have the time to tell him what I had just realized. That I forgave him. And that she forgave us and that we had to forgive each other to survive the labyrinth. There were so many things we'd have to leave done and things left undone that night. Things that we thought were okay at the time because we could not see the future. If only we could see the endless string of consequences that result from our smallest actions, but we can't know better until knowing better is useless. I was walking back to my dorm. I started thinking, I would never know. I would never know Alaska's last thoughts in the moment she spent as a person. I would never know if she left us on purpose, but the not knowing would not keep me from caring, and I will always love Alaska Young. My crooked neighbor with all of my crooked heart. When I got back to the dorm, I put the note on the top bunk for Colonel to read, and I sat down and I started writing my way out of the labyrinth. For a long time, I thought that the only way out of the labyrinth was to build your own self-sufficient world in the back corner of the maze and to pretend that I am not lost but home. But believing that left me a lonely life accompanied by nothing but the last two words of the already dead. So I came here looking for a great perhaps. For real friends and for a more than minor life and then I screwed up. And Takumi screwed up. And Colonel screwed up, and there's no sugarcoating it. She deserved better friends. And even when Alaska screwed up all those years ago, just a little girl terrified into paralysis, she collapsed into the enigma of herself, and I could have done that. But I saw where it led for her. So I still believe in a great perhaps.
and I can believe in it in spite of having lost her because I will forget her. And that which came together will fall apart imperceptibly slow and I will forget, alas, the young. But she will forgive my forgetting, just as her mother forgave her for forgetting her. And how I and Colono forgave her for forgetting herself and me and her friends and everyone except her mother on that night. She will forgive my forgetting, and here's how I know. For a while I thought she was just dead. Just a body being eaten by bugs. And how soon after that she become bone. Bone that I never saw. And how that bone would soon turn into fossil. And that fossil would soon, in millions of years, be coal mined by people of the future and how years and years from now she'll be smoke billowing out of a haystack coating the atmosphere maybe she's just matter and matter gets recycled but ultimately i believe she's so much more than just matter there is a part of us greater than the sum of our knowable parts if you take alaska's genetic code and you add it with her life experiences and the relationships she had with people and you add it all together. You do not get her. You get someone else entirely because there is a part of her greater than the sum of her knowable parts. She cannot begin and she cannot end. No one will ever accuse me of being much of a science student, but the one thing I took from all of my science classes is that energy cannot be born and it cannot die. And that's the hope I wish I could have given her if she did commit suicide. That failing herself and her friends and her mother and forgetting herself and her friends on her mother on that night, those were all awful things, but those awful things are survivable because we are as indestructible as we believe ourselves to be. Parents will always say teenagers think they're invincible with that dumb smile on their faces, but they don't know how right they are. We need never be hopeless because we can never be irreparably broken. I cannot begin and I cannot end. Like all energy, I can only change shape and size and manifestation. But they forget that when they get old. They get scared of failing. But I can't fail. I cannot begin, I cannot end, I cannot be born, and I cannot die. Therefore, I cannot fail. And that's how I know Alaska forgives me. Thomas Edison's last words were, It's beautiful over there, and I don't know where there is, but I believe that it's somewhere, and I hope that it's beautiful. <laughs>